Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and we have a special part in Chapter 4 um, for titrations. So, I know this one you might have to turn up a little bit louder, I forgot my headset, so hopefully this will work just peachy for you. So first of all, what is the purpose of titrations? The purpose of titration is to find the molarity of an unknown, or to find the moles of an unknown, and I thought I had this on there, or to find molar mass of an unknown. Um, so any of those things you can do with a titration. So what does the equipment look like and what does uh, titration look like? The equipment is a burette, and I think this burette is actually spelled wrong, but PowerPoint keeps auto-changing it. You often see it simply as B-U-R-E-T, but it kept changing it and I got sick of changing it. So you need a burette, you need an indicator, or knowledge of a color change. This is only for um, redox reactions. And you need a flask. This is a flask, not a beaker. The reason why I use a flask is you put this thing underneath right here. And that way you can put the tip inside of it. So the tip can go just inside of it so you don't have any drops accidentally missing. And you don't have any drops um, able to splash back out from that shape. So burette, flask. So how do we do a titration? Rinse the burette like this. Okay, so you have to do this for the rinsing. It's always a question they ask. Do not rinse with water. Rinse with what you are going to put in the burette. If you're going to have the burette, again, is this funny little thing with the drip, 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 drip. If this is going to be dispensing NaOH, what you do is you run a whole burette full of NaOH into it. The other thing you have to do is get the bubbles out of the burette tip by opening the stopcock fully. That's the little thing you turn to make it um, open or close. There's a bubble in here. I'm trying to show you the bubble. So you open it fully, and the directions from this picture said whack the side. Ooh. So you need to get that bubble out because the bubble changes size, which messes up our reading. So how do you read a burette? You read the meniscus. Which part of the meniscus? The bottom most part of the meniscus. So if I've got this curve right here, I should have used a different color. I have this curve, that's not very curvy, right here. That bottom part right there. The burette should empty into a flask. The thing going into the burette is called the titrant. The thing in the flask is called the titer. So the titrant, so if this is blue and this is red, the, the red is the titer and the blue is the titrant. You should know those words. They're very similar and you just have to keep them straight. So what can a titration tell me? This is the equation that you would use to get these things to go. So molarity would be MAVA's MBVB. The moles of unknown, MV equals moles. So how can this be a solid? Well, I can literally titrate something where I can put a powder down here. And then I just add some water. Um, so fill it with water and it'll dissolve. Or it won't dissolve, and I can just keep adding this until it changes color that's different from the original. Okay, So I can start with a mass of this, and using MV, remember MV gives me moles, and the color changes when moles equals moles, or moles, sorry. Okay, So I can use mass to figure that out. Molar mass of the unknown, MV equals mass, which you would weigh, this would be burette fun. And then molar mass would be what you would solve for. Again, when you do a titration, you know the molarity of what you put in the base. I'm sorry, of the burette. Okay. All right. So when is a titration done? So meaning, when is it not done? When is it finished? 
How do I know when I stop dropping these things in here? You have to add a solution from your drop by painful drop until the color in the flask changes. You must know the exact drop. The change happens when moles equals moles, assuming you pick the correct indicator. Okay, And we'll assume that we do that. We'll talk about indicators later on, much later on. It's like chapter 12 or something like that. So basically when the color changes. Titrating acids and bases almost always has a double or tri triple H or OH. So for example, if I'm doing MA, VA equals MB, VB, and say I'm going to do my this acid with NaOH, I would do 3MA, VA equals MB, VB. We talked about this a little bit. This subscript makes you have more molarities. If I was doing um, the base here, I would have MA, and let's say I was titrating it with H3PO4. It would be crazy. Uh, let's not do H3PO4. Let's do HCl. So I'm titrating it with HCl. Then I would have MAVA. Again, it's, not, it's times 1 because I have 1H equals... 2MBVB, and that 2 is because we have two hydroxides, so my concentration of base would double. And there were the examples. Titrating redox equations. Um, again, it's MAVA equals MBVB, but we don't have acids and bases. So instead of looking at the numbers of H's and OH's, we'd look at the balanced equation. The color is going to change due to concentration. So CO plus 2 yields CO plus 3. This would change from pink, cobalt plus 2 is pink, to not pink. CO plus 3 is not pink. I think CO plus 3 is blue, but I'm not sure. Um, our lab that we're going to do actually is a redox titration, and you have to use the coefficients. Like all lab questions, there's the error questions that are come in here. Whenever you explain it, refer to MV equals moles or MV equals MV, and make sure you use the word algebraically. So that way it takes care of any mathematical explanations you have to do. If the burette is not rinsed, there will be a problem, but you don't know what the problem is. Um, if you rinse it with water, what happens is the molarity in the burette is too low. If the murette, molarity, I'm sorry, molarity in the burette is too low, that means MV is too. Well, let's see here. That would make the murette, the molarity of the burette too low, so it'll seem too high. It'll be too low, so it will seem too high. So if that's too high then the molarity you're calculating, molarity of unknown, is too high. If you have extra indicator, no effect. It may seem like it has an effect, but it has no effect. Extra water added to the flask. Again, this is a no effect because not measured, or it doesn't affect anything that is measured. That seems weird, but trust me on that. If you stop cock leaks, you're going to have um, extra volume, but it's going to seem like it's less. Okay, it's going to create bubbles in there, extra volume, so it's going to be falsely too high. So if the volume it's going to give you extra stuff dumps in there. So if extra stuff dumps in there, let me take this up here, that's not measured, that means that you used too few moles, right? or you didn't use as many moles as you could do. So let's see here. So if that volume measurement is too low, then 
unknown molarity is too low. What a terrible slide. But you know what the best part about that slide is? It's the last slide. And I'm done in under 11 minutes of titrating fun. Woohoo! Go back to watching a little baseball. Go Cubs.